I'm just a bachelor. I'm looking for a partner. Someone. Hey guys, I got asked um, by one of my followers about my equestrian pet peeves. Needless to say, there's a really, really, really long list. So. I don't even know how long this video is going to turn out to be. So let's see where I can start. I didn't make a list this time. I probably messed up big time there. Where can I start with equestrian pet peeves? Um, one thing I really hate is when parents put their little young kids, like I'm talking below the age of like six, on these really powerful and high caliber horses and expect these kids to be able to handle the horse when in reality they're like strapped into the saddle and they are honestly scared. Like this past weekend I saw a kid who was on a pretty high caliber horse and her mom was like, be careful because if you're not paying attention to where you're going then he's just going to take off around the arena. And she was wearing a magic seat to stay in the saddle and the poor little girl was so terrified that she was crying in the arena because she didn't know what to do. I was torn apart. Like, I hated watching that. That was terrible. Another thing I hate is, it happens a lot in the Western world, when you have people that are hardcore riding young horses. That bothers me. Me personally, I won't even back my horse until they're three years old, which is the whole reason why I haven't even got on Gunner yet, and he's a little butthead. Um, for example, Hagen was green broke as a four year old and when I got him, we started playing around with stuff but he didn't really know his basics well enough to be put on barrels. Now he's almost, almost six and is running, you know, okay. He's still got some stuff to figure out. We're getting there. Really, really, really like grinds my gears is when you have when you have kids and they're running their horses, this mostly relates to barrels because I ride barrels. Yeah, I ride barrels. <sighs> um, when you have kids on horses and they've got spurs and they're um, got this big old whip hanging off and um, they're just sitting here like, yeah, my horse doesn't run so I, I have to wear spurs to make him run and then I have this whip because he still doesn't run even with spurs. Huh. All right. That just eats me away. Another thing, I actually recently had this happen to me several times and I try so hard not to laugh and I try really hard, you know, to not doubt them, but I'm doubting them. Um, when you're talking to somebody who rides horses and you ask them, oh, cool, what do you do with your horses? And they say, oh, I'm a horse trainer. And I'm like, all right, are you? And we get into this conversation and you can tell quite obviously through what they're saying, they're not a horse trainer. And they don't know how to handle some situations. And you kind of sit here with every fiber of your being trying not to correct them and trying not to tell them why they're wrong. Why they are wrong and you're just like, Whose horses do you train besides your own? Not mine. Let's see. Um, I don't have a problem with tie downs used correctly, which the whole reason I don't even put tie downs on my horses is because my horses aren't ready for tie downs. Um, you put, I see it a lot. Um, people will put a tie down on a younger horse or a horse who isn't finished and like, they run them in their tie down and they train them in this tie down and when it comes to the point where they don't have their tie down or they want to take it off they wonder why their horse can't turn anymore their horse doesn't have the aid there to rely on to lean on because he doesn't know how to use his body yet you never taught him how to use his body he's just looking for something to lean on and since he can't do it anymore bye bye turns let's take off and run big gigantic circles around these barrels because i can't turn anymore again this relates to barrel racing well speed events in general one thing that kind of bites at me i used to do this when i was younger too 
is um, when you see kids warming up their horses, but in reality, they're running the horse into the ground before they run, and you're sitting here like, hey, stop. Your horse isn't going to have the energy to run its pattern here in about 10 minutes because it's already dripping sweat. Like, what are you doing with your life? Another thing that bothers me is I kind of understand it now that I started adminning Sassy is people put all of people like, for example, barrel racers or saddle seat riders or dressage riders into this category and they judge every single one of them off of one stereotype. Like, not all barrel racers starfish. Not all barrel racers ride with these ginormous bits. Granted, a lot of them do. Um, just like not all dressage riders ride behind the vertical, and not all saddle seat riders use these unthinkable methods to train their horses. And, like, you know, not all Tennessee walker horse showers show big lick. I don't know where I was going with that last one. I'm not sure what was coming out of my mouth. Here's one that really, really just blows me out of the water. Um, when you have these horse trainers and they want to, you know, make money, so they're trying to train other people's horses or, or train other people. And I'm a very firm believer and you really need to know how to, to ride a horse with the good balance that you should have before even starting a discipline. Um, I myself would like to see anybody that, you know, if they, if anybody ever came to me, which they probably wouldn't, I would like to see my kids ride bareback or no stirrups with good balance at a walk, trot, and canter. That's it. Not only that, but, you know, that that's kind of where I'm going here. But when you see these trainers and they put these people that barely know how to ride horses immediately into the discipline without testing their basic skills first and it really just irritates me like you're setting this person up into a dangerous situation what happens if you know i'm going off on a limb here most of these people aren't going to have a nice calm barrel horse they're going to have something hot and crazy um what happens if this horse gets out of their control because they don't really know what they're doing yet. What happens when this horse goes to suddenly make this nice sharp turn and the rider doesn't have the balance to sit it? And that's kind of the only thing I'm going to say because I don't want people to jump my butt for this. Um, let's see. I'm going to go off and use my horse as an example. When I got Hagen, he was four. He literally could only walk and trot circles, and that was it. He didn't know how to do anything else. Um, as green as he was, I had gotten him in a junior cow horse and trained off Western Spurs, which to me is a huge no-no. Um, I can kind of understand starting younger horses and Spurs looking for responsiveness, but I wouldn't do it personally. I would much rather have a horse listen to my heel without a spur than a spur. Now, putting a younger horse in a bigger bit that is gagged or shanked, I find very unnerving. Um, I believe your horse should be as soft and supple as possible, especially at that age. Um, one of my actual, she's one of my best people I watch. Um, Y'all know her as Little Red Cowgirl. Her name's Danielle. I absolutely love how she starts her horses, and she starts them in a rope halter, and I think it is great to have for responsiveness and for neck reining. The first couple of rides are on a rope halter, then I believe she moves into an O-ring. But those are both my two favorites the seahorses started in. And having a youngster who's that green and a bigger bit to me is a huge no-no and I kind of just want to go over there and take his bridle off and slap the owner in the face with the bridle and you know the bit at the same time. This is probably the biggest one of them all, like no doubt about it. I cannot stand when people put a bit or a hackamore or something on their horse and have no idea how it works. Like, how do you expect to know what your horse is going through if you don't know how that device works when it's being used? Like, how can you put a big 
shanked bit in your horse's mouth and not know how the bit works on the mouth, do you expect to, like, do people think this is okay? Like, oh, here, I've got a four-inch shank bit I'm going to put on my horse's mouth. I don't know how it works, and I don't know how much it's going to hurt, but I know it's going to make my horse stop. Yeah, because that's what it's all about, is making your horse stop. Okay. Um, I was actually had something, like, right on the tip of my tongue, and I don't know where it went. Oh my god, I know what I was going to talk about, too. That says how, oh, that's a light bulb. Um, Jesus, what was it? Okay, so, I hate when people can't look at a scientifically proven fact and accept that it is a fact. And so they say, oh, well, my horse seems fine. So I'm just going to continue what I'm doing because he seems fine and it works. When in reality, it could actually be hurting your horse because science. Wow, that's such a shocker. So that pretty much ends part one of my equestrian pet peeve videos. Now, um, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, write in the comments what you would like to see on in our next video. Like, do you want a question and answer? Get to know your admin, a vlog of our daily lives, um, anything horse-related, of course. Um, just comment it below. And just let us know.